Hi, good morning. Um, we have uh, um, all the panelists up here, and we have mm -hmm. a good audience. So um, let's have you welcome, uh, make the welcome remark. Thank you, always. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, welcome uh, you all to the, our South Complex uh, PCI, Make It Simple 2018. Uh, we uh, appreciate uh, the joining us, our distinguished faculty and operators for joining today. Uh, yesterday, we have very exciting uh, sessions, including the uh, case presentation is very, you know, excellent case presentation and technical forum sessions, including the more, you know, uh, practical tips and tricks, you know, uh, sharing the, uh, from the expert experience. And so um, I, uh, I hope you all to enjoy, uh, you know, our meeting. Uh, today we have uh, prepared we had almost 20 cases as very uh, diverse, uh, you know, complex uh, regions of PCI. So, however, all operators can make it uh, complex region, make a simple procedure, right? That is our, you know, <coughs> goal for our conference. So, case I uh, would be the first, yes. and the case presentations will be uh, Dr. Gang Do Yoon and Pak Kam Bid as our junior colleagues, and so. Introduce the case first. Yes. Okay. Yes, good morning, audience. Uh, I will introduce our first case. The patient is a 47 year old gentleman admitted for the abnormality of myocardial spec after PCI. He underwent previous PCI at proximal to mid LAD with a size for 3.09 years ago and then received giant stenting four years ago again. And he was treated RCA and DB for NADISL one year ago. So he uh, already received recurrent stenting and PCI. Next, he has a history of stroke and then, next. And the echocardiography showed normal ejection fraction and cellular myocardial aspect shows a large side perfusion defect in anterior wall. So we performed the coronary angiography and coronary angiography showed normal RCA, but there was the left main disease progression and there was some uh, ISF in mid LAD stent. Next, okay, and we measured the FF. This time, yeah. this time actually the short, yes, short, it's short right. time. <coughs> short time of uh, instant reason on these cases and 47 uh, male patients. I think it's very, you know, uh, unfortunate yes. for yeah. uh, personally. And so, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, no, no, it's chronic angiogram first. Would you show? Yes. <coughs> angiogram first. Okay. Yes. Alan, can you see that? Okay, clear. Yes, we can. All right, the shallow area of crania. Uh, there are some uh, significant disease or main part, uh, diffuse disease, and proximal two stellar layers in terms of, you know, lumen. Lumen uh, diameter is, is okay. However, distal part of far distal part of uh, ISR lesions had uh, some radio lucency, uh, some disease over there. As you can expect that one. So we uh, really uh, uh, showed uh, the you know FFR yes. first before that. And to be honest, uh, the patient had a positive side improved in skin. However. Uh, we'd like to show the, you know, how to, uh, you know, decision making to uh, uh, buy a FFR, you know, uh, continuous yes. uh, pullback from the distal. So, Do Yung Kang, would you, would you explain that yes. the distal point? The pa this is the FFR curve of the patient. We input the FFR wire to the mm -hmm. distal AD, and with the hyperemia, the value of FFR was 0 0.61. And mm -hmm. with the pullback, there's, you can see the gradual increase uh, to the distal edge of the stand. And at the distal edge to mid shaft to stand, there was a step up about 1.20, uh, 0 0.20. And at the pullback, there was a big step up over 0 0.2 at the left main. So mm -hmm. the conclusion is the patient has an uh, objective ischemia on left LAD. And the major step up was at the distal edge of the stand and left main to proximal AD. All right. If, if you look at the uh, FFR <coughs> pressure curve, 
monitoring curve, actually there are two, you know, step up. There's a from far from the distal part and another lemmain, yes. you know. Uh, so a typical <coughs> you know, concept of tendon lesion, yes. so significant disease on the distal <laughs> ISL lesion yes. and uh, proximal lemmain disease, yes, right? That's right. So uh, we have to think about, you know, uh, which one is more tight or something like that. I mean, look at this. Just uh, you know, calculation. Yesterday, I, I, I uh, briefly showed that the uh, tandem region concept, the proximal and proximal LAD, uh, uh, proximal LAD actually is between the main uh, 0.80. Yeah. The difference, the FFL difference is 0.2 something, right? Yes, that's right. And with portion 0.8 and distal part 0.61, yes. the difference is 0.19. Yes, that's right. right. Exactly, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, however, we have discussed a lot. I, I, I've shown some you know, data. Anyway, uh, well, uh, whatever the largest circumflex branch is over there, disease status or not disease status, anyway, the FFR difference cannot influence uh, you know, too much yeah. in terms of uh, you know, there are some you know, overestimated the proximal part. And however, the, the difference is very small. The still, we have a clear two regions would be quite equivalent, you know, functionally quite, you know, same, yes. you know, uh, uh, significant uh, degree of stenosis in terms of eyes. And so a very interesting uh, concept in terms of a tandem lesion by uh, FFR tracing as we evaluate uh, our both, you know, LADN uh, circumflex to match it with a functional, you know, <coughs> evaluation. So would you show yes, I was too? Dr. Gong? Yes. Very interesting. This Sorry. is the IOS pullback from the mid LAD and the distal to stand, there was a nearly normal region. And here is the distal edge of the stand. You can see the stand size is uh, just about 2.2 or 2.3. The best what vessel size was 3.5. I can say that the stand was underexpanded. Mm -hmm. And there is no evidence of uh, not too much, yes. much intima hyperplasia. Yes, right? that's right. Mm -hmm. And the stand is here is about 2.75, but still underexpanded. You can see the gap between the vessel size and the stand size. And with the pullback, you, we cannot see uh, any uh, evidence of the severe neurointim hyperplasia. So we can say the distal region mm. is uh, or mostly because of so the stand the under expansion. Mm. Here is the stand two layer side. You mm. can see the two second layer mm. outside the uh, previous stand at the five o'clock. The outer stand is a cipher, the fourth cipher stand. And there is mm. a, a little bit a small amount of the neurointim hyperplasia, but the lumen is well opened. And at least three o. Yes, at least three o. There's a little bit on the expansion. I All right, uh, yes. not that but definitely. Lumen is okay. Right. Yeah. Lumen is okay. Yes, and here is the proximal edge of the stand. Very short, is very short compared to left main, and you can see the left main disease. Left main vessel size is four point zero. But the minimal lumen area is about 4.0 or 4.1, uh, sorry, 5.1. So mm. there is a functionally, uh, functionally significant left main disease. Mm. And in IVUS, there was a very small okay, lumen we'll, area. All right, great. Would main. you show us uh, you know, proximal part of a yes. double layer? Of double a layer. Stem? All right, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's good. It's good. And so <coughs> you clearly see that the distal part uh, the stand, this part of the stand had uh, some under expansion yes. right? by, uh, you know, uh, definition wise is less than five millimeters yes. uh, lumen area or something. Yes, However, right. uh, proximal part still, you know, I'm not so happy in, is that the previous procedure, procedure wise, there are deployed the two stand uh, for the treatment of instant resources. However, compared to the reference vessel diameter, it's almost a four something yes. that they deployed the three of them. Yes. Right, so uh, still I am uncomfortable. So, however, lumen areas uh, is quite quite good, and so okay. Would you show us the distal part of uh, ISR lesion distal again? Part, yes. All right. So uh, go ahead. Um, uh, this is relatively <coughs> all right. Two or something. However, uh, in particular, this lesion. Yes. All right. Here, stop it. Stop. 
All right. So, it, the vessel size wise, at least three or yes. more than three or something. However, stand diameter is 2.2 something, right? Yes. So, uh, I think it's uh, uh, by our findings, we clearly, you know, uh, had an uh, understand about the distal part of stand is under expansion, yes. and there are some digits progression about the main, yes. and so that would be uh, related to tandem region. So, uh, particular for ISR, you know, instant resonances region treatment, uh, almost 100% I recommended arm sky day, you know, a treatment region wise that there are some different, you know, mechanism in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the region of uh, resources here. So, okay, so I would like to, you know, save the time. Uh, okay, would you show us again the distal part treat first? Uh, by uh, I was finding there are some under expansion, so I choose. The, would you show that one? Uh, cranial, area cranial view. So, I uh, we have performed you know 2.75 non compliant balloon, high pressure inflation is distal part, uh, low pressure, and uh, almost a 28 atmosphere, yes. so using the 275 and up to 30 or something, yes, right? right. Yeah. And so I want to make it a more bigger stand expansion <coughs> for distal part here. And sometimes we need a, some, you know, long duration inflation is a 20 seconds more than that. Anyway, after the high pressure inflation using the 275, the stand <coughs> diameter clearly yes. increase, right? Yes, that's right. And so would you show us again the after the you know high pressure inflations? Yeah, this how is big the, uh, that one? Yes. Would you explain that one? This is the distal stand that was very small, about 2.2 before the high pressure inflation. Uh -huh. After high, pre high pressure inflation, the stand, stand size became larger and the stand diameter is about 3.0. 3.0. It's right. definitely so enlarged. At least the minimal you know stand area would be almost be. seven something. Yes, that's right. All oh, right, yes. right. So. You want to make it uh, from the 2.2 <coughs> stand diameters, uh, high press after the high press inflation, you want to make uh, almost real. Yes. The meaning is we dilate and, you know, uh, correct the uh, under expansion. And then uh, high press inflation and sequence the drug loading, drug coated drug coated balloon. Yes. Okay, would you show us? And after next, we apply the D. All right, DB, DB here, 30 millimeter. Yes, for Surio. one minute. Yeah. Surio. Yes. Okay. How long? Six seconds. For one minute. One minute. Yes. At least one minute, a long duration inflation. So, paclitaxel, so high concentration of paclitaxel must be diffused, you know. Vessel wall, we have to wait, uh, you know, at least uh, 30 seconds, one minute. And then, okay, last three. Okay, would you show us again the, the other view? Okay, that is uh, distal part. Uh, we fixed yes. uh, the just uh, the 275 high pressure inflation and drug reading balloon. Yes. Right? That's the, uh, what we've done so far. And as a next step, uh, would you show us? So, so SJ, maybe pause right. for a second. So, um, obviously, I think next from step. the IVIS pullback, there was disease outside of the stent as well. There was, you know, instant restenosis. Uh, plus under expansion of the distal stent, especially beyond yes. the, the the stent as well. So, for for example, we don't have DEB in the United States, um, so oh, likely really? we would be have to restent that distal segment with uh, um, whatever length stent we need to have to treat that. Mm. Since we don't have any, uh, you know, if we leave that alone, that is, there's actually plaque there that has formed. So, what do you think? That uh, would you restent, or if you don't uh, have DEB? Right, uh, just uh, I was finding the clearly show, clearly show us that the main mechanism is under expansion, so not too much, you know, uh, intima hyperplasia inside of stand. And so, for particular uh, these cases, we do just, uh, you know, hyperinflation in the drug reading balloon. So you may know that so we just published our randomized study, the restore uh, trials, yeah. uh, the compare with. Uh, the science, uh, second generation yes. drill thing sand and the drill thing balloon, yes. absolutely no difference. Yes, Even right. surrogate, uh, you know, endpoint is a little bit better, yeah. you know, in a group of the drill thing uh, balloon. And so I personally, I believe I don't want to make uh, too much, you know, 
metal layers. And so in practical point of view, currently we have another, you know, ISO study, you know, protocols. However, in a real practice, I don't want to make a stand. Yes. Uh, to be honest, I, I prefer the triggering balloon. There's high pressure inflation. So sometimes, you know, there are some uh, intima hyperplasia, cutting balloon, inf uh, cutting balloon inflation, and in some cases, road ablation and triggering balloon. Yes. That is our, you know, uh, practice. So, uh, that is the final result of a uh, distal part of stand. Yes. Actually, high pressure, the so triggering balloon is perfect. You know, almost perfect, and by our findings, is clearly you know, a show that uh, uh, getting bigger the stand diameters and um, not too much the edge dissection, etc., etc. And so we're gonna move. Some point of view, part. I think uh, is that the uh, treatment of the, the distal lesion is uh, the acceptable, but the the uh, I wanna uh, see the the eyes more more far distally. What I mean is that when we look at the, the angiogram in the AP cranial view. Oh. Could you show us uh, the uh, AP cranial view? If you introduce uh, the uh, IBS more far distally, actually the uh, more mediated portion is a make the vessel size is more bigger in the angiographic appearance. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, the uh, image pullback with uh, IBS maybe the, this is it makes uh, some more yeah. proximally started. So. This is the pullback from the mid so, LED, mm -hmm. uh, far mm. distal from the. A little bit far distal from yeah. the distal stand, uh, you know, rending zone. So, okay, would you show us again? Okay? The reference vessel diameter is at least 3.0. Uh, none more than that. And so the reason why is we're going to, you know, here we are. Right. We're going to choose the uh, 275 uh, non compliant balloon. It's up to the 3.0, high pressure inflation. Mm, that is our uh, strategy, right? Good demonstration, right? Thank you. And so we want to move to the <laughs> proximal part, and uh, this is the main. Uh, would you take yeah, a picture ready. here? All right, all right. There are some disease, uh, clearly uh, diffuse disease from the proximal stand, you know, area to the main. Yeah. And would you show us a circumflex round? So, so SJ, your, your LED wire is not the pressure wire anymore, right? You change it yeah. out, or is it yeah. still a yeah. pressure wire? Right, we'll change it. We'll change. Okay. Yeah. Would you show us the circumflex? Yeah. Okay. This is a Do circumflex pullback, and you can see there's no disease on the, at the just Would you show us again? Okay? Okay? Once again. All right, once, yes. more. Some All more. All right, that yeah. is circumflex or cell part, freely, you know, free of disease. And you know, coming in uh, LED wires from the so eight o'clock. Yeah, uh, this is yeah. diffuse. This is the main here, and the minimal. Okay, uh, would you measure the minimal lumen areas? I, I think it's not too much. You know, significant. Yes, it was <laughs> right. Uh, is, it, is chemical stretch world concerned? However, just I want to show, you know, how big, uh, how small, minimal yeah. areas. Five point oh millimeters. Yes. Five millimeters. Five point oh. Right. Five point oh. Uh, scale millimeters All in right. our data. Uh, the left, the I was minimal lumen area is predictable of functional significance in left main, but not in it was not uh, consistent in the LAD downstream or disease, disease, right? disease. Downstream disease, without yes, downstream disease. Yes, without right. downstream disease. However, left main 4.5 was a right, cut off right. for the FFR 0 0.80. However, in these cases, there are some downstream disease, yes. proxy radius, you know, two stain layers, some, you know. I, 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 I'm not <laughs> happy in terms yeah. of under expansions. And so five millimeters, uh, minimal lumen areas make a you know, positive effect. I, I believe that one. Okay, simply, I want to choose the 15. Yes, this okay. is 15. Okay, I know, 15, yeah. stand, direct stand from the just the proximal stand area to the left main. Uh, Measurement part. of the left main. Uh, this IBS imaging is done by the uh, from the CERC or LAD. Yes, yes it is. LAD we or CERC. Yes, this is from CERC, and we also measured uh, another view from the LAD, and it also shows similar result. Would you show? Every case is we've uh, we've done. Oh no no no! What, uh, what is this? Okay, so. <coughs> to be honest, as I think, is we don't need a circumflex. A uh, wire here. However, I want to keep the wire test, please. Yes. 
Is it right, three so five uh, stands or how, how big? Four something. Four, four point zero. Four point zero. Fifteen. Test please. Test. I want to match it. Just so sell part. Would you? Iliocranial. Okay. Shallow cranial. Yeah. Okay, good. Perfect. Test please. Test. Alright, I could not see and uh, spider, please. Still, that is the only way to confirm the step part test, please. Yeah. Okay, what the thing? There's a little bit uh, inside, yeah. push in a little bit. Yes. And test again. Yeah. I think it's okay. Alright, are you caught up? I am caught up. Please. Okay, proximal part a little bit overlapping. So I like that one. Uh, overlapping is always. I prefer that. Test, please. Yes. What do you think? Oh, third part is good? Yes, I think it's okay. It's okay. I want to still. Okay, I want to see the floral. Clear. And one point five millimeters pull the stain out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. inflate. Why not? Fast in? Good. Perfect. Okay. 10, 12. Okay. Deflate. So, stand deploy and the pull the balloon out, push in the guider uh, into the lumen here. And I want to just uh, take, wanna take a picture here. Okay, I think is it is circum. Yes, circumflex wire. Okay, circumflex wire. Uh, to be honest, as I don't keep the wire, then circumflex. The reason why a uh, circumflex system is pretty you know free good. And okay, picture again. Yes, ready. For shot. Okay, that the stand proximal part. Yeah, is a little bit outside the bar. Uh, osteum, I'm so comfortable osteum. Uh, it is good and not too much compromise. And so we'd like to see the arms, and then you want to make a, a little bit, you know, optimization by arms uh, guided. So why not? You know, angiographic appearance. There is uh, some uh, narrowed in the neo intimal hyperplasia distal to mm -hmm. the uh, left main stand. So mm -hmm. we have to confirm that the severity of the disease uh, with uh, the arms. Sure. Some of it is the original plaque, but also some plaque extrusion, probably from the um, left main proximal LED into the uh, into that area. Of it, uh, but probably some post dilatation should take care of that. But we'll yeah. see. For this particular case, uh, with already positive uh, myocardial perfusion scan, should we still need FFR? No, no, no. <laughs> I would I'd like to ask uh, the same question, the Dr. Ins. No, no, no. The, what is the value uh, of the FFR in these cases? Diffuse disease, I have already discussed a lot, you know, tandem lesions, or, you know, how could you, you know, treat the proximal part, distal part is big issues by, you know, FFR even. All right, that is main for inflation. Yes. And proximal part, all main right. Is perfect. Three millimeters, right? Uh, a little bit, you know, hanging out outside of uh, osteum. However, I think it's okay. Uh, would you show us again the distal, distal this part of stain? This part? From the almost three layers. Uh, however, I really minimize the yes. pro uh, distal part of stain overlapping. It's good. It's one layer. It's just one layer. Yeah. So, Dr. Hong. Yes. Would you do? Would you do a post dilation non compliant balloon? No, I no. don't think so. Oh really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the I the, I'd like to ask the what is the, the value of FFR in these cases because uh, the the uh, thallium scan is uh, the already documented the ischemia right. and the uh, mm -hmm. left main when we, when we look at the angiogram is at uh, the educational point of view. Oh. So when we uh, before you uh, treat the the uh, LAD and left main. Size of the left main is a small, is always a similar to the, even in the mid LAD, it means mm -hmm. that there is a very significant disease. So mm -hmm. without the FFR, just the drives, you can easily detect there is some severity. So mm -hmm. your 
Therefore, the ischemia is already documented, and they're using uh, the imaging, and then you can decide that uh, 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 the next treatment strategy. Okay, all right. So, okay. however, so we, uh, to be honest, in the worldwide, we are the, you know, one of the crazies in terms of FFR concern. So, positive LED, however, the angiographic digital pattern is normal looking areas and distal part and proximal and main disease. And so we're going to make some separate, you know, distal region, proximal region, which one is more tighter, if possible. We're going to fix up just the one region, right? Uh, however, uh, as you see, the distal part of the FFR is 0 0.6. The meaning is whatever region would be treated remaining region would be positive FFR. Yes. The reason why is we want to fix up distal and proximal too. However, in some cases, look at this, distal part is 0 0.75 uh, something, and the difference is a little bit different. Proximal left main difference is bigger. We're going to treat the proximal alone. Yeah. And then just, you know, remaining Distal part, even though, you know, angel affected by arms findings, minimal lumen area, mm, less than uh, 5 millimeter scales. However, still functionally negative, we don't want to touch. That's the reason why is we have to, you know, uh, you know combine this integrated, you know, use of uh, uh, FFR to more, you know, sophisticated, uh, you know, de uh, delicate, you know, uh, treatment modality. Okay. I think it's uh, it's uh, very helpful to sort of understand this physiology a bit. It's not mandatory, right. but I think it helps you understand the contribution of disease in different parts. Um, right. So, SJ, if you do the FFR again in the LAD right now, what will it be? <laughs> I'm not saying that you would do it, to but I'm just saying time. what would you what right, do you predict right. that FFR to be? FFR? FFR? In the LAD, mm, this one, before it was 0.61. This part of FFR would be... 0.8 or 0.79 something. Right? However, <laughs> it's good. All right. <laughs> the reason why there are some Distal disease, disease yes. right, diffuse disease, and so um, I think it's in nothing perfect. Yeah. So you see, you see uh, I, I did, would like to have uh, some comment uh, in the, mm -hmm. the next main standing. The, 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 the proximal site landing zone is very important in these uh, these cases, right? So uh, often we use an IBUS marking to identify the proximal uh, edge, right? Uh, anyway, finally, we have to confirm by angio uh, when we put the stand, but uh, okay. I was marking is very useful to, to mm. identify the, the proximal landing zone okay. before stenting. Great. So. Okay. So, uh, 30 minutes. Uh, yes. So we prepared <laughs> 20 cases. Yeah, yes, so I know. You want to move on another little. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you SJ. Thank Great you. case. Pleasure. Oh, okay. okay, don't okay, worry. We are with okay. you now. Hi. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. We're going to start the second case. And uh, thank you, everybody, for audience and the panel and moderator to participate our third complex PCI meeting. And uh, this live case demonstration is come together with uh, uh, Dr. Yong Hun Kim is our senior fellow and the technician, uh, Chang. And the, can you explain the patient yes. background and history? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this patient is 59-year-old male patient, and he came to the, our, our uh, uh, clinic, uh, clinic for a second opinion. Actually, he's working in Dubai, and he took a general checkup for uh, annual checkup, and terima test showed the positive result at stage two. So he underwent the coronary angiogram and it showed a significant stenosis of, at uh, left main bifurcation. So all the doctors uh, in Dubai recommended him uh, to undergo uh, bypass surgery, but he wanted to come to the, our clinic. Actually, he had no symptom or dissim, uh, sign. Actually, his past medical history was uh, next done. Uh -huh. And he had a hypertension and dyslipidemia. And so his clinical presentation is uh, silent ischemia. Next. And his echo shows uh, normal ejection fraction and thallium was not done. So current angiogram showed uh, severe stenosis at left main bifurcation and proximal LED and proximal circumflex. And a right coronary angiogram showed a normal finding. 
Yes, syntax score was 29. Next. Okay. Uh, if I'm going to summarize this patient, and this patient uh, has uh, no definite uh, chest pain, and uh, she now the work in the Dubai uh, area for uh, construction uh, field and for uh, the, so I was the, the same the company and uh, uh, she took a uh, uh, health examination by chance and but the treadmill test shows the strong positive at stage three. Uh, there uh, she uh, uh, underwent coronary angio and uh, shows the uh, diffuse uh, limb main uh, bifurcation region and uh, uh, the. Every uh, doctor in Dubai hospital recommended bypass surgery. Urgent, uh, you should uh, underwent urgent revascularization. And, uh, uh, the, uh, and then the, his wife uh, uh, lived in the Korea and uh, the, the, her, uh, she uh, take a coronal angel and visit my uh, outpatient clinic. Uh, uh, the, we discussed and the patient definitely uh, want bypass surgery rather than, uh, about the PCI rather than bypass surgery and there is some conflict between Korean doctor and Dubai doctor so and uh, she, uh, he finally decided to visit uh, uh, our hospital to receive PCI rather than bypass surgery and uh, now she is suffering from jet lag and two days ago he <laughs> arrived uh, uh, the Incheon so looking at the coronary angel right coronary wasn't uh, near normal and uh, next and next, so and uh, looking at the uh, uh, left uh, coronary artery system, there was a diffuse region in the suck uh, from the distal suck to the uh, uh, left main. Looking at the angle, is very acute. It's a very tight stenosis suck ostium. And next, this is area coral view. We can see the there is a diffuse disease of suck region and uh, ostium. It uh, looks like a very uh, uh, highly compromised, uh, the significant stenosis. Next. Uh, looking at uh, this is the uh, uh, area cranial view, we can see the also there, there is very tight lesion in the mid LAD. There is some uh, moderate uh, uh, calcification and mid LAD, and the region was extended to the distal and main. And then next. And uh, this is the uh, epicranial view. We can see the region was extended to mid, mid LAD. And next. And uh, this is the uh, area of cranial view. We can see the very tight lesion, uh, the distal and main. And next, uh, the spider view shows the very acute angle was a uh, uh, ostium. It's a very tight lesion. There are a lot of branch and the small segment of diagonal branch. Uh, first diagonal branch is big diagonal branch. And the region is, uh, looks like a very complex. And the syntax score was uh, 29. Uh, 29, and uh, by definition, the, uh, the uh, intermediate risk score. So we uh, the select a French guiding caster, uh, and uh, we uh, decide to PCI in the uh, considering the patient preference and uh, several anatomic and clinical fi uh, feature. So the, you see that every coronary angel. Any any comment for wh what is best treatment strategy for this patient, and any comment from audience and panel yes. or moderator? Any comments? Uh, a patient has no chest pain. Yes. So yes. do you have FFR data? So we didn't do FFR data. The, uh, he uh, come back to uh, Korea two days ago. We have no chance to check the FFR, but. Uh, uh, Non-invasive stress test, the uh, treadmill test shows the strong positive, more than five millimeter uh, ST depression every area. Uh, the TMT treadmill test, uh, I think, uh, uh, non-invasive test shows the positive, very highly, uh, the, you know, some ischemic burden. Any other comments? Uh, any other tests first? Uh, imaging. I presume, uh, I think IVIS will be very helpful to you define yeah, right, right. all the different yeah. area, what exactly is going on. Uh, yeah. Osteum of the cirque, the LED, uh, left main. Um, it's not so obvious in this view, but the left, distal left main looks diseased as well in some of the view. Yeah, okay. So in the epic, epicoral view, and then the, we already checked uh, uh, the IVIS, uh, you know, some in our center and the complex PCI, uh, most cases do IVIS, and the, we uh, select uh, uh, guiding caster, a French guiding caster. Usually, uh, there is a very severe calcification. We frequently select the more strong guiding support, uh, XB, EBU, but it's a not severe calcification. We uh, the select uh, 
Joaquin Casta is a, a convenient and uh, is a good for cover the lemon uh, body and the osteum. So and the, we check the ibus from the suck and the cruise shows the ibus from this okay. part of the suck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, job the Bali. Okay, this is uh, the far distal area, and uh, looking at the plot burden is more than seventy percent. Lumen size was uh, uh, two point seven five and three point zero, and the plot was diffuse, and uh, we can see there is some superficial calcium, and the whole area was uh, plot burden was extended. Job the Bali, and the. Uh, 그냥 손으로 쭉좀 옮겨봐. Okay, this is a region was a okay here, and uh, this is mid suck part, the stipules, and uh, everybody interested in osteum of the suck. Okay, you play. Okay, the here is the prox suck, and the uh, lumen size is uh, uh, 2.75, 3.0. There is a superficial calcium, and uh, this is a prox suck. We can see the suck osteum. Okay, this is a sarco osteum. We can see the, uh, the can, can you back again? Okay, here, okay, Sl slowly. And we can see some circumferential superficial calcium at sarco osteum. Lumen area is very tight. The one o'clock, you can see the uh, LED, the, uh, the wire, and the, you know, some IBUS shows diffuse disease suck region, two distal suck, and the uh, suck osteum is very tight, and the region was uh, extended to the distal main. We also checked the LAD the, from the uh, mid LAD, because I'm epicranial view, and you can see it. This is uh, the uh, aracranial view. Okay, this is aracranial view. We also checked the IBUS. Okay. Play. Play. Uh, play. Okay, this is the mid uh, LED part, and the lumen area is 3.0, and that, uh, just the distal of a uh, diagonal branch is the lumen is very narrow, and the plug was significant. And uh, this is the plug LED, and the huge plug area is 3.5. Okay, we can show us the from the distal part. Is, okay, show. Repeat. Okay, run. This is the plug LED and uh, some high diagonal branch, and then we can see the osteum of a suck coming. This is the LAD osteum, and uh, we can see the plug is significant. We can see the suck osteum is coming, the seven o'clock. This uh, left main is, uh, you know, see the superficial calcium, where the plug was uh, nearly extended to the shaft of the left main, just uh, Osteum is uh, the uh, slightly normal zone. Is plug is uh, uh, the extended to nearly the osteum of the main. So we already shows the uh, ibus uh, every segment. And any suggestion or strategy from audience? Yeah, any comments. panel? Yeah, obviously according to the ibus finding, that is the calcified nodule at the outstanding mm -hmm. flesh. So I need to know how much is the minimal lumen area at the proximal LED. The proximal LED minimal lumen area, how much? Here, here, Okay, this is a, a LED osteum. Looks like three point five. Yeah, looks like three point five. Okay. Not, not small. Yeah. So we are talking about three point five, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm. So it means according to mm. the geography, so it looks like Medina zero zero one to the left, man. And then yeah. Mm. So but uh, looking at the mid LED, it's a very tight lesion, and the plug was extended to prox LED distal and main. You know, some everybody agree. You know, cover the proximity. Charlie Chen, you are you know some pioneer of TK crush. If you're gonna select, uh, definitely by definition is a uh, you know the TK crush uh, six trial. This is uh, uh, the simple region criteria or complex region criteria by definition. Yeah, actually, according to definition criteria, it should be classified. Simple, simple by forget mm -hmm. mm. So if you select uh, the everybody agrees to uh, treat the 
two-stand strategy is not provisional stenting. So what is the, you know, the, the, if, if, if this patient, your patient, you definitely select the TK crochet, right? Yeah, personally, I, I do uh, prefer TK crochet tiny, if yeah, you use yes. two-stand tiny. Because yeah. you know, very tight stenosis, as the ostomy of some flesh, mm -hmm. also some, some fast lesion lines more than mm -hmm. 10 millimeter. Mm -hmm. So if you choose prominent standing tiny crossover from third to left mm -hmm. man, which will induce a very severe compromise as a mm -hmm. proximal ID. Mm -hmm. So simple to say, if you decide to use two stand tiny, mm -hmm. I'd like to use DK crush. DK crush. Okay, uh, any, any comment from panel? I think you also have to think about what um, distal lesions you want to treat, right? The circumflex also looks like there's some disease. Yes. Yeah, so whether you want to leave alone, treat something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously, LED has to be treated as well first. Yeah, then right. you address the um, left main, probably two stents um, technique as well. So. Yeah. So uh, after checking the old angiogram or IBUS is, uh, you know, some IT side to put the stand, uh, our Assam Medical Center usually prefer the crush technique and the balloon crush and mini crush and the crush and the ticket. We do sometimes ticket crush. So next. So we uh, the proceed the, the pressure and the, we put the, uh, the shown blue wire, the sucker osteum. Looking at the shown blue wire, well, there is the sometimes problem is acute angle. And geographically, there is no significant disease, but, but the IVUS shows the, uh, the superficial circumferential calcium is uh, sometimes, you know, some uh, the, the hesitance of the put the balloon. And the, so this is a 2.75 uh, non-compliant balloon that does not pass well. And next. So, and the, uh, uh, we did the uh, anchoring from uh, LAD, the additional balloon, and the put the balloon. And the initially, we uh, tried to dilate the sarco osteum and next. And next, this is 2.75 NC balloon. And then the, we uh, uh, put the dil free dilation using uh, the 2.75 NC balloon next, uh, and the NC balloon next, uh, and the NC balloon next, uh, the NC balloon. At, the, at this area, we inflate uh, several times up to uh, 25 ATM to uh, to collect the circumferential calcium of the sucker osteum and next. And then we check the coronary angel and uh, uh, looks uh, the dilated the sucker osteum and then next. So, and then the next. Next. Oh, okay, okay, here. And then the, we try to put the, uh, the decided to long stand from the distal suck and uh, uh, cover the cross technique, but the, uh, uh, push the uh, stand that this is a, a 3.0, uh, 28 uh, uh, legular stand that does not pass the well. So, and uh, even after pre dilation several times using non compliant balloon, stand was does not pass the well. At this time, we do uh, anchoring technique. And next. Yeah, it's true and because of the presence of the calcified nodule. Yeah, the right, 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 right. Definitely. So yeah, calcified nodule is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, so are you using balloon anchoring technique? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Good. This is the balloon anchoring and uh, uh, push the well. Mm -hmm. This is two, uh, 3 .0 and the 28, uh, the regular stand and the uh, after anchoring and the push the stand is the past well and next. So we inflated the distal and the 3.0 and the 28, the resolute and then next. Uh, the, but the, we, the balloon crush and the next. And then the, the several times we do, uh, the, we try to the push uh, additional 3.5 stand, does not pass the well, we did the uh, uh, additional 3.5 non-compliant balloon to pass the stand and the next. And then anchoring and the stand was uh, passed well and the LED is 3.5 non-compliant balloon and the sarco osteum is a 3.5 resolute stand, so 20, uh, 28, okay, 26, 26. and next. By the way, what's a stand? It's yeah, a this is a resolute stand, okay. resolute, the integrity. Mm. So it's a, this is the spider view with the match, the, the proximal margin, the, uh, uh, the central line, and the next uh, we inflate the uh, uh, osteum, this is 3.5, and then next, uh, next. Uh, and then the removal the uh, stand and the uh, whole wire system, and then the uh, inflate LED part next, and this is a uh, 3.5 NC balloon. You can see that there is a proximal segment towards crush it, and next, and then the, this is the uh, next, 
and then this is the epicranial view, and next uh, we decided to uh, cover the mid LED to the lamp main, and next, uh, and this is an additional NC balloon, NC balloon, the 3.0, this, and then next, uh, and then the, uh, the mid part is put the 3.0 additional laser load, the 26, and next, uh, and then this is the spider view, and the remaining point we put the, the stand, uh, uh, the, my intention is to uh, uh, nearly cover the lamp main and the next. Uh, and then this is uh, additional uh, 3.5, uh, 26 uh, resolute, and then next. Uh, and then this is uh, the, uh, the inner stand and next. Uh, and then the uh, next. Uh, and the we cross the, try to cross the wire, the soccer osseum next. Uh, and then the, we uh, pass the wire well, and then the uh, small balloon, this is 1.5 balloon, uh, after anchoring the LED, and the 1.5 balloon is the passed well, and the next, uh, and then small balloon inflation 1.5, 2, and 3 time, and then we do uh, the stand optimization using mid LED part, the 3.0, and next, uh, this is a stand booster, and then LED part is every uh, the pre -dial, uh, post dilation we've performed, and then the distal part of the circuit, and we perform 3.0 NC balloon. Next, this is stand booster, and next, and then we play the circuit ostium. Next, so we uh, remain the uh, final kissing balloon dilation and the part, uh, uh, final part, uh, the procedure. So up to uh, this. Uh, uh, this stage, any comment or suggestion? No edit in top of the comment. The diagonal um, has a, a significant lesion. W were you sort of just going to let, let it see what happened to it, type of thing, or um, what was so, the plan? Uh, yeah, right. So you know, some the looking at the baseline coronary angel, the distal part of a diagonal branch. Uh, that there is some significant disease, but the branch itself is not big. The problem is the first diagonal branch, but the osteum is, looks like healthy. Usually, we uh, prefer, we do frequently do the gel wire technique for diagonal branch, but the look or uh, lumen area, the osteum was looks healthy, is okay. The, for this case, if you put the three wire, uh, the diagonal branch suck LED is uh, too much complex, but uh, it's, uh, my, uh, I the def decided to don't uh, put the additional wire the diagonal branch uh, even after gelling is uh, the, I have definitely the sure the past the uh, additional wire for diagonal branch. So this is the NC balloon, the three point. You go to Kakai. With the park. Uh, you already done uh, 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 bifurcation uh, standing, but uh, in this case, there are uh, lots of superficial calcium. Yes. Therefore, the, the pre region preparation is very important in, very in this important. case. Right. So yes. we always uh, confirmed after okay. balloon so dilatation okay. by okay. IBAS okay. about the uh, uh, superficial calcium region, uh, we can succeed uh, the, the e e enough lumen uh, dilatation by IBAS, it, it is very important to confirm the pre-region preparation. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. You so did a lot of uh, inflation, so I, I, I believe it might be okay, but uh, uh, by IBAS, it is very important to confirm the, the uh, uh, result of pre-region dilatation. It's very common after, after calcium crash. It's a pretty yeah, difficult in most yeah. cases to advance the Okay, so balloon. it's a previous mm. uh, balloon, it's a used balloon. I'm going to select an uh, additional new one, 3.5. Yeah, so going to stepwise the balloon side, mm -hmm. you use a 1.5 balloon, right? What's the yeah, diameter right, right. of the NC balloon right now? It's a the, surreal. This, we, we already do uh, <laughs> the post dilation, the distal part of LED, distal part mm. of the circle using 3.0 balloon. This is the final step to Kissing balloon dilation, 3.5 NC balloon for uh, LED to lamp main, and the additional 3.5 NC balloon to plug sock to the lamp main. Okay, this is a new one. Even Kasukwashi is still commonly used in some centers. Okay. I still have two more additional comments about Kasukwashi. The first thing that 
you really we do not require side branch immediately after standing by vessel. So the key point is that after post dilation for for this case for you know, for left for man then we will rewire. Second second point you to always keep the wire from the pro proximal cell into the side branch. Is the uh, DK cluster technique popular in the United States? Um, I, can, I don't really know exactly the survey, but the, for the left main, typically not. It's just, uh, you know, in terms of steps. Um, but I think it's a good technique. Uh, it's just a matter of taking some time to do that. So most of, most of the time, we probably do similar thing, uh, sort of a mini crush and then cross uh, afterwards. So obviously, the downside is sometimes it takes a hard time to crossing with a small balloon and you use anchor of the LED. Okay. Um, so if it is a really difficult uh, angle, we might do the DK crush to kind of prepare the angle area, so easier to uh, recross and all that um, afterwards. Okay, good. I think in Japan, the most of the physicians do the DK crush and the LED diagonal bifurcation, but they feel some kind of hesitation in left main bifurcation. So left main, no, no DK crush? Or? Uh, some physicians do that. So, and uh, what is the, you know, some frequently used uh, two stand strands in United States? You know, the European country and the China is uh, uh, many centers select uh, DK crush as a default strategy for two stand strategy. Uh, there is some variation in the region and nation. So, what is the most frequent in the, the strategy in Stanford? I think for the left main will be mainly just a, a mini crush and mini crush. I think it depends on the angle. If it's really quite mm. difficult, we would do the DK to prepare um, so that Better. your recrossing will be easier. Um, so I think it is, um, and also the hemodynamic, si hemodynamic situation, if it is uh, a depressed LV, um, you know, the, the mini crush will be a very quick thing to make sure that everything is open and stable, then you spend time optimizing. Uh, so I think uh, the majority will be sort of a still mini crush, uh, single kissing, uh, and maybe pot afterwards. Um, in some cases, will be DK. Okay. This is a, a 4.25. I'm going to do pot. 10, 12, 14. Say the deplete. OK, go. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. The left main area is uh, up to best size 4.5. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is stand booster. Okay, go. 10, 12, 14. 14. 16, 16, 16. 18. 18. 18. Save. Deplete. Okay. I'm going to check the angle again. Shoot. Okay. And geographically looks okay. I'm going to check the IVUS. Uh, at first, uh, I check the suck, and then I'm gonna check the uh, the edit part. So, and the, uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, usually select the mini crush and the cl uh, clash crush. At, at the time, we positioned the two stand the simultaneously, but sometimes the patient was uh, hemodynamically compromised. So. Uh, we uh, recently adapt the balloon crush technique. You know, some DK crush is, is a basically balloon crush technique. Initially, uh, one kissing and the one part, and then uh, final additional kissing and repart is a two kissing and two re two part is a basic the principle of the DK crush. So angiographically, the crush segment looks very clearly, but there is some concern about the cranial level. Can you see? Mm. Okay. Is there some problem at the cranial level? Okay, I'm going to show that mm. this is actually Looks like a contrast okay, okay. Mm. Alan, did you find? Okay. Did you find some contrast at the cranial level? Mm. 
into the yeah, room. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm gonna hand the pull back. This is the distal circle part is expanded well. The vessel is a three point zero is expanded well. The ledger loose stand is expanded well. And this is the part is the prox suck is expanded well. So I'm gonna show us the prox suck. Okay. So I think uh, you know some the Shaolin Chen you recommend that if you're gonna do select DK crush and the recross wire you uh, strongly recommend the proximal part recross wire. Is there any special region you show some some of animation and some of uh, animal data that if you're gonna do the proximal part recross is uh, much much better? Is yeah, any, the, can you explain the why the we select the proximal the segment recross? Yeah, we took him, uh, we took him in the data from bench uh, test okay. to clinical case. So, because you know, after balloon quash, there will be a wider gap between side the stand and the main mm -hmm. vessel. Mm -hmm. So, if we access side branch from tissue cell, so usually why it will be you very commonly beneath mm -hmm. the side of stand. Mm -hmm. So, this is why we recommend always to keep the wire from the proximal the cell. The proximal part, mm -hmm. yeah. So T stand and any tap technique is uh, any other the stand the wire recourse is recommended this part just the TK crush is recommended the uh, proximal part but uh, you, sometimes it's difficult to uh, select the exact position of the proximal part this part at the times I usually select the central part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I select the easiest part. Uh, whatever easiest, yeah, right. Yeah. That is that is question. <laughs> I, uh, once it crosses, I call it whatever I want to call it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> So and uh, but usually we need a multiple multiple <laughs> wheel. Part. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go. <laughs> to make sure. Okay, so the, because of time limit, I'm gonna the this part is pull back. This is the mid LED part. There's no dissection, and uh, we already do the high pressure balloon dilation using the three point zero NC go. balloon. Okay, okay, I'm gonna pull back automatic. This is uh, put the three point five uh, regular stand and expand it well. We can see. The, the Carina area and also the distal part of the main and also the main ostium. You see, we can see the very uh, the severe plug. Mm. And then this is LED ostium. The, we can see this is the distal part of the main. So we already do a part using the uh, 4.25 uh, shot uh, NC balloon. This is the main shaft. And then the, the stand was uh, exactly yeah. positioned the lemon ostium. So I think uh, we did everything for the crush technique, final kissing balloon. We did the uh, pod, and then Ibus uh, shows the lumen area is okay. And uh, any uh, suggestion uh, from panel or, or moderator? The Shaolin Chen, how do you feel? Yeah, only only one. Well, only one comment about the proximal ID. So mm -hmm. I recommend to use a 3.5 non-compliant balloon mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. one more post dilation for ID, mm -hmm. and then followed by send the kissing balloon inflation, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the proximal ID stand looks like 3.0. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, okay, the, we already do the 3.5. Is mid part is 3.0, and the proximal part we perform the 3.5 NC balloon two and three times, proximal circle 3.5 NC balloon two or three times, and then finally 3.5, 3.5, final kissing balloon two times, and then finally we did uh, 4.25 uh, short uh, segment uh, NC balloon for a uh, part uh, final procedure. Yeah, and okay. I, yeah, I understand. And the left man stand, some flat stand, and also mu part already stand looks very beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the proximal already stand looks like only three old millimeters. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay thank you very Perfect much. Test. I think we're going to go to uh, Dr. An next. Uh, Dr. Park, uh, any other last comments? Good. Okay. Okay. Great thank, case. You. Thank, really you, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Congratulations. Dr. An. Hi, yes, how are you morning. doing? Uh, we are ready for you. Okay. Uh, could you introduce our patient? Uh, good morning. Uh, basically, the patient is a 57-year-old male admitted for a first chest pain, which was started six months ago, but recently aggravated. He doesn't have a uh, coronary history. Next. 
uh, has a risk factor of the diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and current smoker. So the presentation is unstable in GINA. Next. So we did the uh, echo. Echo showed the normal EF, but the treatment test showed positive at stage 3. Uh, so we did the uh, coronary angiogram, which showed the uh, tight stenosis um, at left main bifurcation and the LAD and circumflex as well. So we did the FFR uh, LAD, which was a uh, 0.61. Right, just to show the mild disease. The syntax score was uh, 30. Next. So this is FFR at LAD. Next. OK, so we're going to deal with uh, today uh, left main bifurcation disease and uh, diagonal disease. So look at the. Uh, This patient have uh, the, this left main and this uh, uh, circumflex OCR disease through this left main disease, long LAD and diffuse. The circumflex OCR is very close to circumflex is very tortuous uh, angle is more than 90 degree, and there is some severe uh, angiographic calcification. Suspected some rupture, proxy there is some haziness, <coughs> and combined with a very diffuse disease, LAD. And I insert the two wire, and there is some ambiguous of the diagonal branch osteum. So after in insert the wire, we check the coronary angiogram again. So diagonal osteum is it looks hazy. So osteum is uh, not clear. So how to treat this patient? Any comments? Um, First of all. That main bifurcation, um, but obviously somewhat different from um, Dr. Park's or, or Don Wook's case from before. Meant much more calcification, more angulated uh, circumflex. Um, any pre-stenting treatment? Strategy, balloon only, atherectomy of some sort, what, what do you think? Yeah, first of all, I recommend to use third wire to protect the first diagonal. Can we see the IVUS? Uh, so okay. uh, people ask for IVUS. Uh, okay, so I insert uh, three wires anyway, the circumflex and I including the diagonal branch as uh, Dr. Chen recommended, and then we evaluate the IVUS. So uh, there is uh, some angiographically severe calcification, so I'd like to see the inside of uh, coronary artery. Could you show us the LAD lung, please? We learned the IVUS from the mid LAD. There is a very minimal plug area. There, there should be a digital landing of LAD stand. And plug is uh, the, uh, very minimal here. And mid LAD vessel size is 3.0, not small vessel. Compared to the angel finding, I was sure that the very big vessel. The plug is getting bigger and bigger, lumen is very tight. And here is a vessel size is more than 3.5. some superficial calcification. Compared to the angel findings, the IVUS did not show that uh, significant calcification. Above the diagonal branch, the vessel size is uh, more than almost, uh, here is the diagonal branch. Diagonal branch wire is coming from the 11 o'clock. Superficial calcification, above the diagonal branch, vessel size is more than 4.0. Here is uh, some deep calcification, the 3 to 9 o'clock. Vessel is more than 4.0. Plug is significant. And second place coming from the 9 o'clock. Here is left main. Superficial calcification, severe superficial calcification. Main vessel size is almost 4.5 or 6.0. This is extend to the mid, uh, uh, mid shaft of left main. Here is, the, here is the shaft of left main. And 
clock to left to main, the minimum plug. Clock to left to main, vessel size is 4.5, 5 or something. So another important point of view is uh, the circumflex host team. Could you show us the circumflex? Here is the uh, with the portion of a circumflex. Node is the minimum plug. Vessel size is your 3 O. The bigger than angle of your findings. Plug is getting bigger. Superficial classification. And here is the vessel size is 3.5. tight area here. Now here is not ostium, the proximal portion of the circumflex. Here is the ostium of the circumflex. Left main is coming from the three o'clock. Okay, definitely I believe that the circumflex ostium has a very significant plug burden and very tight stenosis. And my another concern is the diagonal ostium. Could you show us diagonal ostium? Diagonal branch is uh, bigger than my expectation. The uh, almost uh, the 30275 sigma cut the plug. Non fast. Could you show us the OCM of diagonal branch? Okay, just before I'll run, please. Okay, here diagonal OCM also have very tight stenosis, okay. and this tired. is uh, I was I was. Uh, so I was findings. Do so you have any comment? So Dr. An, uh, because of yeah. time, so I think we need to go a little faster okay. so that Dr. Colombo okay. can uh, show his case as well. So maybe okay. just tell us your plan and then we can comment uh, as you okay. sort of carry out with so your plan. My plan is uh, just two, uh, two cross techniques, two cross technique, the cross for the diagonal branch, cross for the circumflex by the balloon cross. I'd like to briefly introduce uh, what, what I've done so far. Sure. Okay. So insert wire and pre-ballooning using the 275 because it's a high pressure balloon to deliver the stand. And this is the 275-23 stand. So look at implanted stand. And this is a very important step. The pull, a little bit pull back, very high pressure up to 20, uh, 18 atmosphere because the proximal diagonal branch is vessel size is 3 o So after balloon crush, Using the 3.25 high pressure balloon, you can see the crushed area. And then, diagonal, uh, side, uh, circumflex the high pressure, 3.25 high pressure. And then, stand implantation, the 3.523, and crushed by the 4O high pressure balloon because the uh, proxy LED vessel size is more than 4O, left main more than 4O, using the 4O high pressure balloon after implantation. A crush. Before the crush, circumflex angle is very uh, narrow, so the, I applied another high pressure balloon uh, insert inside to the uh, circumflex stand. High pressure balloon 3.25 up to the 28, and then crush using the 4O high pressure balloon crush. This is just after the balloon crush. Ready flow is good. All side branch flow is good. And then I like to move to the LAD stenting. My landing zone is uh, uh, mid, mid LAD. There should be a normal looking area by IVUS. So I implanted a 38, 3.25 stand, high pressure. And then Fox LAD to the left main, 4023 stand implantation and this is a 3.25 high pressure balloon sequentially and then proxy AD and left to main for all high pressure balloon up to 28 after optimization of LED stand I like to insert wire to the diagonal branch for the final kitchen balloon 
Fortunately, wiring is very not so difficult. And then one O balloon, and then the and one O balloon is easy pass, but the bigger balloon cannot passing through. So using the anchoring technique, so I can insert the balloon into the diagonal branch. And this is a 2.75 high pressure balloon. This is a 3.25 final kissing to the diagonal branch. Flow is good. LED and diagonal branch. The move to the uh, left so main. So circumflex rewiring is uh, not so difficult to again. And then insert the 10 balloon. And this is a 2.5 balloon. And this is a 3.25 high pressure balloon. And this is the final kissing. Okay, I already finished the whole procedure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, congratulations so, for remembering many, all the stand si uh, balloon sizes that you Full use. Uh, that's that's a, a tour de force of all the two bifurcation that uh, I, I think, you know, in this situation, the two crush is probably the way to go because anything else is just too many steps here to just get all the side branches covered and then address the main vessel. Uh, I think that's a, a good sequence to do. Yeah. Um, Dr. Han, did you turn the, the eye bus after this procedure? Because I'm afraid uh, there are lots of eccentric calcium. At that time, uh, it might be very difficult to obtain uh, the uh, uh, circle. circle uh, uh, I would like to say that a very wonderful result, right? Sometimes yes, there so are the some... Uh, yeah, under expansion sometimes. Yeah, I fully agree with the, uh, your opinion. So I didn't do I didn't do the IVC surveillance yet. So manual pullback I quickly, and if there is some so underexpanded area, I will apply the high pressure and find a kissing balloon. So maybe what we can do, Doctor An, is that let you do IVC and we go to Doctor Colombo's lab. Okay. Depends on how much time we have left to come back to you. Okay. So, but anyway, okay, great you. case. Uh, Thank Show you. us the IVUS maybe a little later if possible. Okay. okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Hi, Antonio. Sorry to keep you waiting. Hello. Uh, hi. Hi. Good morning Good to morning. everybody. Uh, we have been here patiently waiting. <laughs> we try not to do much because we want to keep uh, live transmission. Yeah. So uh, my colleague will present uh, the clinical history yeah. and uh, I will discuss the strategy. Yeah. Let's see the case. Uh, I'm Kusobi in Asa Medical Center. Uh, today we uh, prepared the case of uh, a 63 year old male admitted for exertional dyspnea and I cl uh, HA classification 2, which was developed two months ago. His coronary risk factors were diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. Next. Next slide. There's a slide. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he or, or also have a, a smoking history. And uh, next. <coughs> next slide. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the left coronary angiogram showed uh, significant st stenosis at the bifurcation, uh, proximal to mid LAD and diagonal lesion, and the FFR was uh, 0 0.76. And the right coronary angiogram showed mild stenosis. Okay, so we prepared, uh, uh, we decided to PCI for uh, LAD and uh, we, we can uh, think about the diagonal okay. disease. So you see uh, the angiogram, uh, there is a LED which angiographically, uh, can you see the angiogram? Yes. They can see the yes. angiogram? Yeah, we can, yes. 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 Uh, the LED is moderate disease. Honestly, if I didn't have FFR, I would call non-critical LED. So uh, it's also true that sometimes FFR makes the lesion to be critical, uh, <laughs> not, uh, not only the other way around. Uh, this uh, is critical because it's a very long LAD, a large territory, and uh, a diffuse disease, but very, very uh, uniformly distributed. So it doesn't give you the visual impression of a typical stenosis. There are two smallish diagonals arising from the lesion. 
they are really not big enough for stent, not small enough uh, to be disregarded. Yes. It's a little bit uh, <laughs> not ideal. Uh, you need the three wires. You need an LED wire and a wire for both diagonal. When you need the three wires, you can go with the six French, uh, but uh, honestly, there is too much friction. I like seven French. Uh, here, they already prepared eight French femoral, <laughs> so we really got the luxury. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I will go for, uh, with a slender introducer from Terumo and use the seven French radial. But we already have uh, uh, the femoral. Uh, we place three wires. Uh, I will try to go provisional. The first diagonal is a little bit more diffuse. So what we did off camera, we place wire in the LED, wire in both diagonals, and the predilated the first diagonal with the two O balloon, uh, semi-compliant. Uh, the result after predilatation of the first diagonal was good. Uh, you see the two O balloon inflated uh, with a good result, no, no clear dissection. So while we were waiting, uh, we did the drug eluting balloon, uh, 2.5 uh, low pressure on the first diagonal. We inflated for two minutes. We had plenty of time. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, then we removed the balloon and uh, uh, the result was good, so we said, uh, let's uh, be provisional on the first diagonal. Nothing was done on the second, because there's a very, just mild uh, osteostenosis, uh, which we'll see. Uh, then we did IVUS on the LED, uh, in order to see if we need some uh, uh, cutting balloons, some more aggressive uh, predilatation. Yep. Can you show IVUS on the LED? I was please. I was on the LED. Okay, yes. we start uh, uh, in the more distal part. The vessel is 3 O. Um, is uh, some disease. You see a calcium uh, between uh, uh, 3 and uh, 6, uh, 3 and 5, but uh, not really very narrow. There is some plaque uh, as we move uh, proximally. We are still distal to the diagonal. And... Uh, here there is some disease. You see, it's a, it's a moderate uh, diffuse disease. Here you will get a little bit more narrow. Some calcium, nothing uh, tremendous. Here a little bit more. And here it gets uh, better. Mm -hmm. Some plaque here. More plaque here. We are uh, uh, in between the two diagonals. And here more proximally, you see some calcium around 2 o'clock. Here is more narrowing, most probably the narrowest part. And then we go move uh, more proximally, where the vessel gets bigger. This is a 3.5. So it's a, it's a typical diffuse, not uh, focally critical. You see a lot of plaque here. We are proximally. Yeah. Here is 3.5. Is a mixed plaque, some calcium and some soft in here. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we measured uh, is a 34 millimeter the yeah. area. Yeah, right. Uh, so we need a 36. Uh, we select a synergy. Uh, maybe 38 is a little bit longer, but uh, I think 32 is a little bit short. Yeah. So in general, we prefer to be a little bit uh, longer than shorter. Yeah. So uh, considering the fact that the lesion uh, is not uh, uh, particularly calcific, uh, except focally, uh, we elected to do direct stent. Yeah, uh, right. It's something that I rarely do. I hope uh, it's going to be OK. Uh, but uh, considering the IVUS finding, what do you think, uh, Alan? Uh, are you in favor of the extending, or do you still believe we should predilate? Uh, I think the length of the lesion and a bit of focal calcification, I think you could do direct extending, but I still prefer predilatation to get some of that uh, uh, sort of uh, um, sclerotic lesion release. But I think this one you can probably go both ways, but uh, it's okay. a long lesion, but ready to get uh, you know, post dilate with higher pressure, bigger balloon. Yeah. Let's, uh, okay, so we leave the wires in both diagonals and we proceed with the, the direct stenting, uh, this is a 3 a 38 millimeter synergy stent. Yeah, right. Okay. 
So go. your landing zone is just distal to that septal, I presume, uh, somewhere yeah. the, uh, where the yeah. opaque, yeah. Wire, distal, opaque part of the wire starts. Uh, yeah. Distal to the second uh, diagonal. Yeah. There is a surprisingly, there is more disease proximally than distally. But uh, I think, uh, so, stent goes down very easy. Uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, I always like to check uh, distal is plenty, approximately is uh, sufficient. Let's do a test, good test. Okay, I think we are covering a lot. Let's go in the area because uh, uh, you awesome. really awesome. get uh, an appreciation in the area about the proximity. We don't want to interfere with the... Okay. Let's take a good picture. Ready? Ready. Okay, we have plenty. We can, uh, uh, we can even move a little bit more approximately. Yeah, I would come back a little because, bit more. Uh, yeah. Because uh, small test. Small test. That's okay, good. I good. think we can go there, inflate. Inflation. Yeah. Six, eight, ten. <coughs> ten. Let's take advantage of two projections and see how it looks. Go to 12. 12. 14. 14. Let's check in the cranium. Okay. I like to keep the stand delivery balloon at least at 20 seconds. We can go to 16. 16. I think uh, the balloon is uh, reasonably symmetrical inflated. Okay. Uh, we can deflate. Deflation. So we kept about 20 seconds. Okay. I, I never do bang bang. I try <laughs> stay up at, at least 20 seconds. Yeah. I think uh, you get uh, this tent is uh, very visible. Let's, uh, so the strategy is uh, try to do nothing with the first diagonal and uh, maybe do kissing uh, with the second diagonal. Uh, really, these are two diagonals uh, that for me are for provisionals because they are really not large uh, enough. Uh, they are okay for stenting, but uh, mm -hmm. really borderline. Okay, let's take, uh, let's take a picture. Mm -hmm. Let's see more of the distal LED. Always like to see the wires in the field. Ready? Ready. Not bad. Okay, let's. Uh, the second diagonal is not the bad. The second diagonal is pinched as uh, expected, but is not uh, is not worse. Mm -hmm. And I think we can proceed with post dilatation. Post we have a trio non-compliant balloon, yeah. which uh, uh, before doing IVUS, uh, in the interest of time, I always do post dilatation, mm -hmm. and then I do IVUS, uh, and then decide. Uh, if I need to do any additional post dilatation, higher pressure. So uh, even uh, when I use BVS, uh, uh, there is no point to do IVUS now. I mean, mm -hmm. you can do it, but uh, I think uh, we're going to post dilate usually 2022 atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we know already the size of the vessel. Distal is a trio, approximately is 3.5. So when we post dilate distally, maybe we go to 18 uh, atmosphere, not the stand. I like the stand when it's visible. It really makes life easier. Huh? Yeah. Let's inflate. Inflate. So we are inside the stand. Right. Go to 10, 15. 10, 15. 18. 18. There is an area yeah. in the mid. Uh, Just to still to the second diagonal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to come back uh, a little bit, uh, go 18. 18. Okay. Stay up uh, 10 seconds, down. Down. Now let's come back with the balloon a little bit more. Okay, go up. Go to 20. 20. 23. 23. 24. 24. 
Ok, stay up 24. Ok. Let's take a film. Go to 26. 26. 3.3. Do you have, uh, can you ask the patient if he has any chest pain? Uh, up to Yeah, he feels chest pain. Okay, this chest pain is most probably due to stretching, uh, it's not due to ischemia. Right. But, uh, okay, we are at 26, uh, the balloon is well inflated, go down. Go down. Down. Okay, let's come back a little bit more. Okay, up. Go to 20. 20. Let me check in the RAO, make sure that uh, we are not, uh, we are well inside the stent. Can you deflate a second? Let's, uh, yeah, we are inside the stent. Yeah, right. Let's come back a little bit more. Now we are perfect. Go up again. 26. Here is the 3.5, so we really can, uh, can take advantage, 26, stay up. Okay, 26. Yeah, 26. Stable. Yeah, 10 seconds. Okay, down. Down. Okay, so we did the... This is real 3.5 non-compliant. This is the trio, semi-compliant. It's... Uh, Almost 3.5. Okay, let's remove the balloon, take a picture, and then I like to hear what is your suggestion. We're going to do IVUS, of course, of the LED and make a decision regarding diagonal branches. Mm -hmm. Again, these are diagonals where uh, the uh, Provisional will take a very high priority. Okay, let's take a good injection, strong. <coughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so the LED looks, uh, looks fine. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an area uh, after the first diagonal which uh, angiographically doesn't look... Uh, doesn't look perfect. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, we went at uh, 24 there with the trio. We're going to do IVUS and decide. I'm not so sure that uh, is uh, fit for a 3.5. We don't want to take any risk. Uh, Diagonal-wise, uh, I think he's okay. I will not even uh, do kissing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But uh, let's do IVUS. Uh, Uh, just uh, to check where there is uh, that small bend uh, and uh, decide uh, uh, what strategy to take. Okay. Uh, so, Antonio, on the previous picture, the, the, one of the wire looks like it's outside the guide. Is this guide has eye holes or anything? The, the previous picture, not the, from this angle. Um. No, no, okay. there's no side holes. Yeah, I think okay. it's uh, just, just a, some funny. Just a, a funny. Yeah. A fun <laughs> No, It's weird, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Okay, so now let's do the IVUS on the LED and uh, then uh, decide. But uh, I think 90% uh, is most probably yeah. finished here. This one, yes, mm -hmm. to the wire to the first diagonal. Uh, And uh, as you know, I always do the post dilatation with the jade wire. I'm really not uh, particularly concerned. Okay, let's go distal to the stent. Okay. Run. So we are uh, a little bit distal to the stent. Vessel here is fine. No dissection. Vessel size is a solid 3 millimeter. Some plaque, but really nothing uh, dramatic. We're going to see the stent in a moment. Here is the stent. Nice. 
is nice uh, round, uh, is a pose, uh, the lumen is, uh, is very acceptable, mm -hmm. even when there is a calcium, uh, lumen is fine here. We are going close to the area which angiographically looks a little bit questionable, but the lumen is fine here. I think it's just eccentric. Lumen is very acceptable, very acceptable. Yeah, it's, uh, you see it's eccentric, yeah. Yeah. and that's the reason why you see angiographically funny. Uh, when the, you have a calcium on one side, uh, the stent tend to expand uh, asymmetrically. Mm -hmm. The stent here is expanded asymmetrically and is uh, very difficult uh, to make uh, more symmetry because uh, when you have, uh, paradoxically, is worse when the calcium is small than concentric. When you have 360 degree, you have to break the calcium. When the calcium is not uh, a lot, uh, is very difficult to break it because the other side of the vessel becomes compliant and dilates. Yeah. Here is proximal is fine. Mm -hmm. There is some residual plaque. Yeah. Okay. I think, um, I mean, I, I honestly, I think we are done. Eh? Yeah. Uh, Perfect. I, I don't want to make it too, too, too easy, but... Uh, I think uh, sometimes there's nothing wrong to be upset because it's easy. Let's, uh, let's remove the wires from the diagonals. Mm -hmm. So uh, always when you do that, uh, hold the guiding catheter because the floral, guiding please. catheter uh, is the floor. Let's go in the areo. Areo. Yes. Yeah, this is a very simple maneuver, but if you don't do it uh, uh, carefully, you may damage the left main, so I like to come out with the guiding catheter and hold the guiding catheter like you hold the dog, mm -hmm. not to make it move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you are right. <laughs> it looks, uh, right. looks like uh, one wire is oh, outside. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? He must have a side hole guy. Yeah. Does he have side holes? Side -hole. Does he? Uh, <laughs> yeah, side hole. Yeah, he's has side holes. Yeah. So I think uh, we went from uh, we never put the balloon in the second diagonal. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. We would have realized if we did that, <laughs> eh? but not having to place balloon. Eh? <laughs> it's the first time it happens in my life. Yeah, my, uh, me too. It's I never use a, I, I never use a left guide with side holes. I only use <laughs> when I did the DCA, but not. <laughs> so it's very it's a very very difficult technique to go from side hole to back into. Um, very very <laughs> difficult. Uh, yeah, very difficult technique. <laughs> Yeah, I saved the previous image. Okay, let's yeah, remove yeah. this wire. Let's remove the second diagonal. And let's remove the second diagonal. <laughs> I think, uh, Alan, you are very sharp. Eh? <laughs> but it really, I didn't even know that they had the side doors. <laughs> it's a good demonstration. Well, at least if you want to try to send a balloon over, that would be hard. <laughs> yeah, if we did, let's uh, do a final, uh, a final uh, scene. Let's go in back uh, with the guide. Okay, test. Okay, test. Okay, let's take both projections a little bit more. Areo, okay. Okay. Ready? Ready. Looks quite good. Okay, let's go to the cranial. Yeah. Take a look at the diagonal branches, yeah. So the first diagonal we did the drug eluting balloon. Yeah. The second diagonal we did nothing. Yeah, we we'll leave it. We would have realized. <laughs> <laughs> but I must. I didn't do it on purpose. Okay, ready. Ready. You see, there is a pinching on the second diagonal, but I think uh, this is a typical case. Uh, where you have to resist. And uh, there is uh, some uh, narrowing uh, at uh, the LED after the second diagonal, 
uh, but this is due to eccentricity yeah, yeah. that uh, we saw. Let's take uh, the LAO, to, uh, but uh, I think uh, this narrowing <laughs> is due to eccentricity. We can do measurements, uh, but uh, I would like uh, to have uh, a cross-sectional area uh, more than 5.5 everywhere. Mm -hmm. Can you do some measuring? Uh, just to make sure that we have 5.5 at least uh, in the tightest uh, part uh, of the... What is the cross-sectional area there? 7.4, maybe. Second diagonal between. Uh, so here is where it's eccentric. 7.4, so it's really plenty yeah. for a trio uh, my, uh, my general rule is that I take two times the size of the balloon and take two out. Mm -hmm. So the trio, two times the six, uh, has to be above four, 4.5. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, six uh, is really happy. Yeah. Ready for the cranial LAO? Yeah. Okay, that's... Uh, I think it's good. That looks good, uh, good dissimetry <coughs> flow, ECG is fine. Yeah. Uh, so or, or I the think diagonal uh, flow is good, so I think, you know, yeah. you, you're done, yeah. So this is the typical case where you really have to do all your effort to be provisional, but uh, uh, not to lose any branch. I always like to finish the case uh, with the same number of side branches as the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> not more, yeah, not more side branches, branches after. No thank more. you very much, okay, uh, uh, thank Antonio. You. Great thank case. You. Uh, thank you.